Okay. All right. Welcome to the translation of the talk Festival of Democracy um, by Daniel Möhring, Holger Nuriel Maren and Oliver Gembala. Um, there were a few collaborations that happened during the G20. Um, also in cooperation with the CCC. There were especially relevant for to this talk today, there was There Is No Time project and the FCMC. And they're probably going to explain what they exactly did. And we both have representatives of both of these initiatives. All right, and translation to do uh, for you will be doing today, Merle and Ningvi. So have fun with us, uh, bear with us. I hope you're still enjoying Congress on day three. And um, all right, have fun with the talk. <laughs> Applause from the audience. We can hear a helicopter noise at the moment. They're trying to raise it up so it's even louder. Still helicopter noise. I think they're trying to get you in the mood for what Hamburg sounded like during G the days of G20. Um, yeah, thank you that we can be here. <laughs> there was more helicopter noise. <laughs> All right, we want to introduce to you FCMC, the Alternative Media Centrum and Tint, a 48-hour live stream. And both of these are projects that have very different scales, but both of them used media and there was TV-like formats that were used to get to a broader audience and public. But before we start describing these projects, let's jump back a little bit in the chronology of things. And Maren is going to talk a little bit about how Hamburg developed and felt like before G20, a time where we all really felt that something needed to be done. All right, uh, the G20, I wanted to bring that back to memory. I mean, obviously a lot of you already knew G20 is an informal get together of the most important industrial and bordering countries which uh, followed the G7 and G8 and is the important, where, important meeting where finance, uh, po climate politics, migration changes, things like that are being discussed. So there's a lot of stuff that's uh, being discussed and that can be criticized uh, without even talking about the people being present, such as Putin, Trump and Erdogan. Have we seen them? All right, the, look at them, that's them, that's the G20. Um, in the beginning of the year of 2016, it was announced that the German government was going to have the head of G20 and decided that they were going to have it in July 2017 in Hamburg. And that is interesting from a question of how it, why it makes sense to have things like that happening in cities like Hamburg. And uh, this, I mean, these, ever since Seattle and Geneva, I mean, it's been a question of does it really make sense to have these? And I mean, like to the uh, one in Heiligendamm in 2007, there was a reason that it was put in the peripheries. Um, like why? It, because it's a lot easier with the infrastructures and also with security reasons to 
uh, have these meetings and get-togethers in the peripheries. So this time around, they wanted to have to show a kind of as a proof of democracy to have the big summit, the G20, in a big city. There was a public information event happening in 2016 in the Congress Hall in Hamburg, which was selected as uh, the place where G20 was supposed to be taken, taking place. Uh, the Blue Zone is the inner city of Hamburg. Uh, the Congress uh, halls are very centrally located. You can see the FCMC. You can see down below where Tint was located. You can see where the Philharmonics were, are, and you, you see how it's like located right in the center. And you can see right next to FCMC, there's St. Pauli and Sternschanze and uh, the Red Flora, which are um, the party and bar districts of Hamburg, and especially Rote Flora is uh, one of the alternative left centers. Um, and it was becoming more and more clear that it's, it was a question of safety to um, have that taking place directly in the heart of the city. And half a year before the uh, summit took place, you could see the situation dramatizing uh, further and further. And you could see the increase uh, of the discussion around safety and security issues with regards to the summit. And in September, um, there was an event. People were invited. It was about double the size of this room. There were about 800 people who lived in the area who came to show up to understand and get inform informed. And um, the they wanted to know how um, the politicians thought that uh, would what the the summit would look like and what uh, how it would concern them. And there was two microphones in the room through which they could ask questions. Of course, there were gigantic queues of 50 to 100 people right behind the microphones, the two microphones that were in the room. And there were always a lot of concern and worries, and people weren't really interested if you could celebrate children's parties during the summit, uh, and if it was possible to get a pizza delivered. Those were things that were also amongst the questions that were asked. It was, but there was also massive concerns that were being raised from people who live in the area. Contrary to the questions asked, the politician representatives, the political representatives, especially the Minister of Inter Internal Affairs and the mayor of Hamburg, stood their ground that the summit, having it in a big city like Hamburg, it should be working and showing that a demo democratically functioning society can handle stuff like that. And we have given uh, the title to this talk. Can we go back to uh, the title? Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, a Festival of Democracy. Or is it a scheduled state of emergency? And it became more and more clear that this was supposed to be used as an event to drive the discourse of inner safety and security and the fight against terrorism. So there was um, a lot of um, power given to um, the police. There was an, it was announced beforehand by Antti Grote, who is the Minister of Internal Affairs, that there would be um, that this event, the summit, would be basically a window into the workings of modern police work, and that it was never really considered that. I mean, it was it was clear from the get-go that this was not supposed to be a de-escalation. There were 10,000 police officers that were supposed to be there, and in the end it was 31,000, and I think, to be honest, this number was probably higher, the dark number of... We probably don't even know how many press, like how many policemen were actually present for the summit. The Hamburg Yellow Press 
took a gigantic role of the Hamburger Abendland, uh, warned before, uh, uh, warned of the biggest black bloc um, that would uh, be facing Hamburg, and the Welcome to Hell demonstrations that were announced um, before the night before the G20 was supposed to happen, and it was put into direct correlation um, to the escalation that was. It was basically announced beforehand, before it actually took place, and it was. And then that's what then happened on the night of the sixth of July. Uh, there was a new uh, a new um, temporary prison that was introduced. There was a social media team by the police that was being increased and staffed more heavily that were supposed to uh, do the work on the police work on Facebook and Twitter. There was telephone lines for civilians. The press department of the police is being higher staffed. And you can see month in advance before the summoned, you have the different discourses that are filling the rooms where on the one hand, there's the discourse, it would be better to just leave the city. There's advice to just there's like by by high officials from the Ministry of Internal Affairs, why don't you go to the Baltic Sea uh, for the day if you could? <laughs> they would really advise you to do that. Offices and companies are letting their people off for the day and there's shops that are like barricading their doors and the path to what will happen during the summit was made and laid out much beforehand. And the politicians were really busy with trying to calm everyone down. We have a quote here from the mayor of Hamburg who compares the G20 summit to the harbor's birthday. And I'm, to be honest, still baffled that the summit is not over yet and how the discourse is still going on. That's a quote by the mayor of Hamburg. We're going to show you a short chronology of the week of the summit to um, stress that starting with Monday, the 3rd of July, there were a couple, 10,000 people in the city. On Monday night, what happens, it happens what was basically made possible weeks beforehand. There's a legal camp that is taken down by the police and the illeg illegality of the action of the police is then in the aftermath given so that was sort of a, a safe space for activists, um, not uh, far from the uh, convention center. And there were a lot of people on the streets all throughout Hamburg. And it was very much peaceful uh, until the first um, escalation tactics by the police started. On the uh, 5th of July, the so-called alternative summit uh, at the um, Kampnagel station started and there was a demo rave on Wednesday, um, everything for everyone, uh, that was the title and again there were 10,000 of people on the streets and then on Thursday, the 10th, the Welcome to Hell demonstration. Sorry, on the 7th of July, um, there were actions all throughout the city uh, trying to bar um, passage and this led to this nice uh, split screen image on Friday. You see uh, all the uh, summit participants uh, listening to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in the uh, newly built Elbphilharmonie and you have also uh, uh, garbage on the streets of St. Pauli. And then on Saturday, uh, the largest demonstration at uh, G20 with over 80,000 participants and again this peaceful protest was uh, harassed by police. So so much for the chronology of this week. And 
Hi. And I want to pass back to Tint. There is no time. Hi. So that was a short introduction, and I'm now going to uh, try to explain what we uh, did. Unlike FCMC, we were going to look at the structures behind the sole spectacle. So we didn't just um, want to bash those um, political figures, um, but we really wanted to take a closer look at this event. We didn't really expect anything great to come out of it. Does anybody know what came out of it? Uh, I don't think so. Um, so that was very distant. And for us it wasn't about looking what's happening in Hamburg at the summit. We wanted to look at the uh, substance. We, we, we wanted to uh, really think about this festival of hopelessness. Like, what's, what's up with that? Why, why do people feel uh, so disenfranchised? And uh, Nuriel is going to continue. Um. We started out um, with a very strong uh, critical thought about the economic situations in which we all live. So for us, we came up with this idea of developing a TV channel. Um, in which the official agenda of the G20 should be discussed. And Tint, we can talk about this uh, in three ways. The content, first, um, that really focus on this 48-hour live stream. Um, a large part of that was uh, our developed interview format and also some documentary features and other short clips. Um, the place where this took place um, was uh, where we uh, produced these videos. Most people at Tint lived there for uh, the time of production, and every day there were spectators coming and um, seeing this live. And the third part is um, the network. So from from the place where we were, we transmitted this into the whole city of Hamburg, into uh, bars, libraries, uh, into public and sort of public institutions, and even and especially into the area around the summit, which of course was um, where. Um, Activists, activities and demonstrations were prohibited during the time of the summit. And so we try to um, take these narratives from the G20 summit and reinterpret them. And so we uh, invited expert speakers um, to develop a critical perspective, uh, um, giving examples and trying to find ways to deal with the situation. So, as an example, uh, possibilities of digitalization. Uh, so, we talked about uh, the widespread digitalization that's happening and uh, logistics, and of course we know about that in uh, the harbor city of Hamburg. And we also discuss, discussed that um, these crucial points of logistics, uh, whether they can be changed or not. Okay. Um, All right. So, yeah, we're going to talk more about these places, but I'm just going to uh, say something about our group. So this is really different from FCMC, where a lot of people were involved. And for us, it was more about basically a group of friends. Um, it was maybe 15 people in the core group and 50 that really um, 
were involved in the whole process. Three quarters of us uh, were women, which is quite interesting. We had like 6,000 euros as a budget. And most of us come out of artistic contacts. So just to give you a rough idea. And yeah, we're going to continue talking about the place. So what you can see here is down there in the picture, that's the archipel, archipelago, uh, 50 square meter swimming studio that we put into the um, area of Hammerbrook outside of the uh, blue zone that you saw earlier. So a lot was on land, for example, the stage and uh, places for sleeping, uh, kitchen and whatnot. Uh, next picture. What you see here is what we, what we really felt uh, in situ. Uh, we really felt, you know, this was a contrast to what was happening in the rest of the city. It was very much idyllic. And it was really a place to calm down and where we only saw the helicopters um, far away on the horizon. And so the people working there, there was the film crew, uh, camera, sound, uh, live cutting. Next picture, the set team, so studio design, mask, lighting, um, stage managers, uh, infrastructure team, and fantastic uh, cooks that um, provided us all with food. So, as for all other tasks, we had content that was, you know, the core of it all. And there was an organizational group that was tasked with preparing this content and, you know, which experts can we invite to talk about this. And we really tried to uh, educate ourselves to get on the same level. And this worked really well. And it was a great experience for all of us uh, to make this happen. And so here in this list, you can see all the titles of our of the official G20 agenda. And so the dumb titles we try to you know reinterpret and use uh, for our means, um, as I've said earlier. And we've tried to reach out to different groups, to the FCMC, to the Chaos Computer Club, um, who, to people who really helped us. And our declared goal was not to have this very simplified um, criticism of the situation in which we live, but to really think about um, what's going on and to find points where people can uh, focus direction. So systematic criticism and not just, you know, showing pictures and uh, flashy images of some representatives. So we saw ourselves as part of the regular protest, uh, not outside of it. And we just wanted to add something to the protest that was out there on the street. And so we have some examples for that. If we continue, that's what our stream looked like. Um, in all of the places throughout the city where we could, where you could watch it. And, yeah, we also had uh, this area for text where we could uh, announce stuff, whatever came into our minds. And then we had this um, fed by Twitter and other sources um, uh, flashing news, um, 
at the bottom, this is something different, a panel with Bini Adamczak, who did an introduction to the uh, terms work and economy, labor and economy, and why that is relevant today. Another panel uh, on the topic of Africa. Did you mention yet that down there? Yeah. All right. Sorry. So, uh, one topic at G20 was uh, deepening um, friendship uh, with Africa. Uh, and so we had a historian there, and it was about the uh, colonial past of Germany and Hamburg's self-image as a gateway to the world. And in this talk, it was also about um, the genocide the Germans did uh, in the 20th century in Africa um, with the Herero people. And we wanted to show on what foundation the G20 talked about the deepening partnership with Africa. And so the next picture. We're going to talk a little bit about these kind of receiver points that we uh, built spread out through the whole city. Let's do a little excourse on the techniques later. We had on site a car where we had live editing and then who was from the free public channel TIDE and we had a coder from the VOC team so that we could um, generate a signal. So we were like, how are we going to put that on the internet? So we then uh, asked next door at the tire car park, uh, we're part from G20 and we'd like to put an antenna on your roof. Surprisingly, they were really happy and they were like, compliance. We explained a little to them uh, what we were doing, but they were happy and worked with us and it seemed that it proved to be a very robust solution. From there on out, uh, we went to the server of the CCC or the VOC and from there on, uh, the stream was spread out further to YouTube, to our website and so on and so forth. And then it went also to the server of infobeamer.com that then helped by giving us their software in an adapted way that was made for our project. And from there it went to all the different points of our Raspberry Pi in the city that we had set up. And it was received the way that we showed you before with a little info and fields and uh, the talks and the Twitter feed below. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the receiver stations. Uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time, so very briefly about this. We had 40 places all over Hamburg. In the center, it was really easy to find partners that would put up screens in the fringes. It was a bit more difficult because we really had to build up trust. And it was a lot of times about understandingly so, um, that people did not want to be regarded while they understood our critics criticism. I mean, they, they really understood our criticism. At the same time, they didn't want to do the step to be part of a political activist and, and portray themselves as such. Next picture, please. Um, all right, there were what you can see with the Tuvat uh, era is nothing that we started. It was something that another group started that went out with a little pocket projector and uh, projected it on their own initiatives on places in the city. And that obviously made us very happy. Um, the communication with these receiver places even though I show this in a bit of a negative light, it was also a very essential part of the project to raise these questions and address these questions, whether or not you want to portray yourself as political. All right, um, let's go quickly on. All right, very shortly and briefly, I think for all of us, this was a very interesting and wonderful experience that these things can be made possible, that you can have an idea 
And with a lot of persistence, you can really st get stuff going and the ball rolling and you can see people politicizing. And that was a very important and good experience. And all of a sudden you have these people with lots of capacities and special knowledge and special technicians. And it was all there. And I think that was something that we were going for, that you can make stuff possible if you just want them. But let's talk about FCMC. All right, cut. Let's talk about FCMC. And Oli, you should be smiling. All right. Applause for the smiling person on stage. Okay, so there's a few people that are live here through another channel. So we get uh, these beautiful hints of people not smiling enough on stage. So FCMC is, uh, they have this, they, 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 it was born out of uh, this mood that we were talking about earlier. There was um, the sneaking suspicion that there would be a very one-sided media coverage and, and there was a general criticism on the G20 summit that, which is why in beginning of February 2017, we decided that we wanted to have an independent international media center and wanted to give a space and became more concrete that turned into FCMC and that then was located in the stadium of the soccer club FC St. Pauli. Uh, we asked ourselves, uh, how can we make it possible under the circumstances of a big state event to give pluralistic media coverage. So FCMC was supposed to be part of a piece of the protest as well, with the overall goal to show and cover the G20 summit, but also the protests and the surrounding protests and do that in a differentiated manner and um, um, it was supposed to be a media experiment. We really saw this as an experiment. We never intended to have something concrete or an idea that was to be fulfilled. It was really about well, how can a media activist practice look like? So as a project, this was to be a very diverse, and you can see that in the FC generator up there, there's a lot of names and different names showing up how you can interpret the FCMC. So all of this was obviously not born out of the blue, but it was initiated out of a network, a concrete network that is very local. It's a very Hamburg-based network, but above all, and that was very important, was carried on internationally. Well, some of them locally got together, but also were spread out. In the beginning, there was a small group with different backgrounds uh, to like name this. There's no time for that. I'm sorry. Um, but we had the immense luck that we found a perfect space for this mad big project, and that was the stadium of FC St. Pauli. And the contact to them, it was that was that came out of a lot of work that was done in the district from a lot of people from the network and also from people representatives of the soccer club. And so there was a lot of trust from the side of the football club towards us and they, they really wanted to support our idea and project. So on the 1st of May, we finalized our contracts and then there was finally a concrete legal ground for... There was a first press release that then came out on the 14th of May that announced uh, that coalition and all in all this project that was driven by a lot of groups and small companies that come from the district St. Pauli and it was supported in experience time and they, they, they really, there, there was one company that gave 9,000 portions of, of food and we have a short clip that we want to show you. Um, we also 
work together with mainstream media. This is one of the examples. Uh, network, computer boards, keyboards, monitors, places of work. These are the comparisons between the G20 official offices and the alternative one in the Stadium of St. Pauli. The official one is done by the official press office of the German government. Uh, 4,800 4, journalists from 65 countries uh, who are organized uh, from representatives of 700 medias. Every journalist that can be prove that they are a journalist that has an official uh, paper that they are supposed to publish on the report, they have to have a journalistic background and then they can accredit it for the official uh, bureau. For the ones who do not fit those means, there is the independent media center, FCMC, a little bit improvised, based on donations with lots of with technical support from the Chaos Computer Club, around 400 accredited from roughly two dozen countries by the voluntary run organizers. Those are freelancers, those are people that are in on editing boards, that's TV, print, radio, everybody's there. I mean, there's also a lot of media activists who are doing blogging and social media. It's mainly G20 critical people from the left spectrum that find workspace. There's going to be live space, there's going to be press conferences and discussion rounds that is being hosted by the cult, almost cult like soccer club, and the soccer club thinks it's really important to have an alternative media coverage, um, is very helpful when talking about G20 Summit to show more facets and different lights. And it's I think there's lots of different aspects that are going to happen content-based-wise also that should be looked at from different sides. Uh, the first press conference tonight, not everything was running smoothly, but it's also the first alternative press center as part of the G20 history and a symbol uh, of how it um, separates the city into two sides. I mean, there's a few theses uh, in this little piece, in this little clip, but uh, that's maybe something for another talk. There was a lot that was raised in this talk, and, and we, we really had an invitation to, to give people... And I mean, it was also kind of... Uh, we wanted a critical journalism, we wanted to give a critical questioning of journalism a platform. So we came up with this idea reinventing critical Germanism in time journalism in times of effective populism and this is to this day the unresolved research questions for this project we never had the goal to in any way shape or form really fulfill this ideal but we obviously did a lot in the framework of this at least that's what we hope um, I mean we to we also send out an open invitation, an open accreditation to, with very few uh, critical aspects that you're not allowed to do, like being part of the police or secret service or such things as that, then you could not become accredited with us. But other than that, we were really open. You only needed an email address with reference to uh, the media or background that you have. Um, we really tried to keep it as low level as possible and target it towards media activists as well as professional journalists with press cards and press IDs and everybody was welcome really. We wanted to really work against the becoming more and more precarious working circumstances that journalists find themselves in. So we didn't have any money that was ha needed to be put in. There was no, no, we just gave workspaces and a press ID wasn't necessary in order to become accredited. And you could even uh, sign up on grounds uh, through this uh, form that you saw beforehand. You could, we could see who got accredited and then who then actually showed up on site. We had a few numbers. We had about 1,143 people who did wanted to get accredited and then 978 people actually checked in. So accreditation was also the sign up. 
and it was also how people were split up by the different skills for the media center, but also different tasks and works. So we had 493 people checked in for the crew. Uh, just a quick overview that we're not going to go through. Oh, can I can I quickly? You can see it's a bit like the angel system that we used for the accreditation here and wanted to use that for the different shifts but the shifts for Congress are very different so a lot of stuff that we planned we had to change on site and we couldn't execute everything that we wanted to do the way that we wanted to do and we had to do that very short notice so if you do things like that uh, a lot of people that help are a lot better Absolutely. A very essential uh, piece in building this was collective processes in the context of the center. There was self-organizing, professional, but not commercial. I think that was really what's important. It was all based on donation, but also low level, like low in entry levels. For example, for the different we had a very open editing concept and idea. Yeah, and we had a lot So we also had a lot of discussions um, in the beginning um, about all these processes. Um, and we're going to give an example later. But even during this experiment, we had different um, forms and ways of communicating that we thought of and so yeah we're gonna give an example for that here you can see uh, one of the main elements the daily press conferences held on the south side of the stadium again a brief summary it was a week of really hard work um, there were helicopters everywhere so um, yeah don't mention the sound quality it was the noise stayed with us constantly and so we were very happy to have to sort of uh, refugium space and in our immediate neighborhood there are some other projects so the catering uh, antifa cooking for the people who came to the demonstrations and participated uh, soccer matches and throughout all this um, we really um, stayed within the stadium uh, for 24 7 without having to talk uh, to any sort of janitor so that was really due to the um, mutual respect and trust with the uh, soccer club and our good, very good um, work leading up to the summit. So this is a brief overview on the map. You see the different spaces, the journal space um, uh, and the social space uh, next to it. I'm going to talk about um, that a bit more. Um, so we really try to uh, invite a lot of people to this. Um, so we try to using the German press agency's um, mailing list to invite people and get uh, people from different backgrounds to come, um, lawyers, um, representatives of the uh, demonstrations and uh, political activists and so they could um, talk about um, the daily news or even about the uh, uh, the stuff that was talked about at the uh, Kampnagel um, so about long-term goals um, and we really try to have lots of different commentaries given here. It was uh, done every morning at 9 o'clock, uh, translated simultaneously and in cooperation with the CCC VOC um, sent uh, to the internet as a live stream. The social space wasn't... Um, uh, we didn't put as much work into this as the tint. So this is a regular 
uh, room, um, recreational room of the FC St. Pauli. Um, we didn't want to have any pictures taken within the FCMC. We had the stage for that, but um, inside we wanted it to be very much quiet. We didn't want any home stories about this project. And all of these inquiries were done uh, outside on the stage or somewhere else in interviews. So this was a recreational room to calm down, to rest, and there was also a bar. And so the main workstations, uh, those were the studios where you could uh, create and edit um, journalistic pieces, and we entered this room on Sunday and stayed for seven days, and there was like no trial at all, no trial period, and so it was very interesting to see how this collaborative situation uh, developed itself, how people came in with certain interests, and that brings us to the next slide, a plan there was an original, original idea for um, decision-making and uh, production, production structure. So this worked uh, on some levels, but not on others. And the important thing for us what was um, some words on the press codex. We to uh, keep within the bounds of the law, we had to have some structure to not violate any privacy rights, uh, any uh, journalism laws. And so, yeah, I can show this on my laptop, but not up there. So on the right, you see this uh, CVD. There was a structure for people to hand in material they filmed on the street and then have other people uh, edit that. And for me, that was quite an interesting process because this really, you know, questions the terms of authorship and really creates a huge pool of material um, that really led to very heterogeneous results. Uh, I just wanted to point out where, you know, we don't have any time whatsoever, so very short. We really broke this down uh, into everyone can read and write everywhere, no right distribution whatsoever. Um, and the way we handled it, we entered on Sunday and then Tuesday at 6 p.m. the first press release went out. And it worked. Okay, kurz nochmal zur technischen Ausstattung. All right, um, technical side of things. Uh, acceptance station for media, what I talked about. Um, so, you know, we deleted the uh, geodata, metadata from the photos. Um, we had 10 workspaces for cutting two studios, um, this open broadcaster software, an interesting live direction tool where people really learn to use it uh, and use it well within a very short period of time. And so this really, you know, went straight through the roof uh, on Sunday um, because really the first press conference on Tuesday after two days, that's uh, amazing. And then uh, we also had this uh, radio studio working with us. Um, this was available for uh, everyone. Uh, people could bring in um, their own uh, yeah, guests for interviews. Uh, we had technical assistance provided, uh, some of photos. So, the FCMC, um, some numbers, uh, it cost us 50,000 euros, uh, which were covered by uh, donations, and so thank you to everyone who participated in that. Applause for that.
CCC. <lacht> Ganz kurz zum Output. Das ist jetzt weiter. Also das CCC. Thank you. So all of this is still um, available online, except for uh, our temporary tweets. We're going to talk about what sort of applications we use to um, spread our material. There was a YouTube channel. Uh, Everything uh, we produce is still on media.ccc.de, over 70 videos um, produced during those six days. The archive on YouTube is still up as well. We also had this video um, stream, um, maybe similar to uh, what Tint did. Um, to have this uh, show locally on browsers in various places in Hamburg. What we also want to mention is Graswurzel TV, uh, Grassroot TV, uh, another organization from Hamburg. Yeah, so this is YouTube, you all know this. And now we're just going to show some material that was um, produced at FCMC. Focus Point Hamburg, very welcome to the fifth press conference. Servus, grüß Gott und hallo. Servus, hello, a little bit louder. Hi, hi, we're live at FCMC. And now we're watching part of the protesters. The media center works as a platform for independent media coverage on G20 summit. Uh, until Sunday, we have crazy days ahead of us and we are want everyone to take on their professional job responsibly uh, question question and do not buy into the yellow press kind of headlines the reason that I'm participating is the alternative summit of the people at the time of the G20 is because we are living in a very divided, very fragmented, very brutalized world. And we're a world where just one thinking of neoliberalism is dominating all countries' policies. We need to think alternatives that protect the planet and that protect the livelihoods and lives and freedoms of people. And we need more solidarity. Hi. Fellows, I'm sorry I don't speak German, but he does l'Afrique. Africa for us Africans is in Africa we find a lot all the material all the premier materials for development. Uh, we're now listening to music from the protests. We're living, uh, we're experiencing at the moment an attack on democracy, on the liberal democracy. Yesterday we had the problem that six n colleagues known to us were not given the accreditations from the official press offices and or they got taken away from them uh, without any sense. Uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at arbitrarily. Arbitrarily, all right, let's look at the first photo. Uh, it's basically like civil war that are being produced by the people who are in the state power and not the ones who are standing out peacefully. We're here because they're killing us, so our message is to come together to make solidarity. Okay, we come from Paris. We're two journalists. Uh, we're watching the police storming the Schanze. The chaos people that you can see here have covered their faces, have weaponized themselves and are not passive. We do need uh, the state of emergency is what what we need is the guarantee for gathering available uh, gathering and what, that's what we're fighting for. We are trying to talk to the police and asking them to take a step back from escalation and escalating the scenario and it really fears us that there's a couple of the anti-G20 protesters that are attacking small shops and that are setting fires on cars that are of people that are living here and the people that are living here are on, on their side of the protesters and we're with you and you need to take a step back and we're upset and angry for the cuts on civil rights that we're experiencing from the sides of the politicians who just want to show and we need to 
seine Kriegsaufzeichnung mit einer kurzen Vorrede. Er hofft, Schönberg ist during she's reading something that is really hard to translate because everything is going on very quickly um, <coughs> all right <coughs> helmet can you explain to them why we didn't have another choice after waiting for a long time and then storming onto the Schulterblatt with weapons. Schulterblatt is located in the Sternschanze. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to uh, no, really forgive uh, the kind of blurry lines uh, because this is like a heat detector. Can you see them? See him, see him lighting a Molotov cocktail and he's throwing it to the. Uh, this is like a, a life threatening attack on the people who are being put on site. Do you have any more questions? All right, big applause for the video clip that we just saw. I uh, hope you guys forgive me any kind of inconsistencies that might have happened because there was a lot of uh, quick quotes. Uh, we did our best up here. All right, okay, we got another five minutes and we thought we'd, we'd give like a 15 minutes for questions, but um, announcing if you want to come up to us and talk to us, we're, we're going to be outside of the hall just after the talk uh, and available for you guys to talk to and we have time. Um, I would like to do a final round and have to uh, talk about uh, the um, showcase of modern police work that we started we talked about in the beginning. I mean, you might have uh, heard of uh, for weeks now we have the public um, search for still for trying to track down people who um, should be on the wanted list of the police of vandalizing during G20 and at the moment uh, there's a lot of offense towards personal rights that obviously at least are being mirrored by the media coverage. Uh, you might have uh, seen the title of Süddeutsche Zeitung or have it in your background that G20 is not a free pass for breaking the law uh, where you have the feeling that the, the colleague Ribert Prante is one of the few people that upholds the press codex and it's obviously something that's still very viral it, it's not known to me that to this extent we ever ha had police braving, showing off w with working with uh, software and automated understanding and video footage of, of trying to understand how specific people moved during G20 to then afterwards prosecute them. So the showcase of modern police work is something that we really need to watch. I don't really know. I'm just going to pass on the microphone because we really are running out of time. I just quickly wanted to uh, underline that we obviously are not up here together with that reason. It's, it's obviously important to announce, that, like uh, collaborate on these things to to create bounds. I mean, we create assemblies, we combine skills, we read together, and that's how we get further ahead. And the circumstances are not being set in stone. And this is what we want to uh, pass on to you, that we didn't just do a project and you can also do this. Uh, there's applause from the audience for that. Um, okay, all right, you can do this as well. If when you have the CCC and the VOC on your side, for example. Yeah, really, uh, to uh, summarize and to, and we have our uh, uh, final resolution and you can see it on the fcmc.tv where we want to uh, show that G20 in Buenos Aires is just up ahead and to inspire people and if maybe you're thinking about it maybe somebody's here like come come up to us talk to us we, we really want to uh, be part of this in Spanish English and German our uh, resolution is up on the page uh, one more thing not just in our own idea 
before the talk, there was one person that came up to me that asked that tomorrow at three at the rocket there is supposed to be a picture taken for imprisoned people from the G20 summit. Uh, I don't know more about this, but I wanted to pass it on. I have another thing, another call that I want to send out there on Saturday. We were in the disposition to uh, try to do record our own live stream. So if anybody's got this on video, um, the live stream of the FCMC, we would really like to have this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, applause from the audience. Do we still have time for a question or two? Um, I think I'm afraid we're out of time. Uh, anybody can give me a show of hand. Uh, according to my watch, we're out of time. I really want to ask for a big round of applause for this great talk. Uh, there's lots of applause going on right now.